This book is dedicated to my father, uncles, and husband for always giving me a reason to smile, even when I don't feel like it. Deep in the rainforest, surrounded by the tall trees, was a family of elephants living happily together. There were five of them, and they spent every day playing and laughing together. Their home in the jungle had many fun places to explore and find, making every day an adventure. Ellie Cherie was the youngest of the group. She was always cheerful, polite, and loved playing with her ears. She was doted on by all, but never spoiled, and would do her best to keep up with the rest, never feeling bad for falling behind. Her older siblings were two twins named North and South, and they were just as much opposites as their names implied. North was big, tall, tough, and strong. He liked to keep his hair slicked back and used his trunk to keep it in style. South was much more timid and poetic. She loved talking and poetry and always kept a collection of precious rocks with her wherever she went. The mother of the three was Mami Edita. She was a soft-spoken and bashful mama, but a very proud one who knew her children were always thinking in the right. She spent most of her time taking care of her father, Emilio, but to the children, he had a different name. Grandpa Melito was their favorite friend and family leader. Despite his age, he had more energy and style than all the rest of them. He led their adventures and the family as the life of the party. Even though his legs were slow, he used his cane to put a skip in each step. Even though his ears were droopy, he would shout out loud so he could hear himself talk and sing. His motto for his family was to laugh through life. There were so many places to go, things to see, and folks to meet that staying in one place just didn't seem right. Every day should be a bright, special adventure. That's how Grandpa Milito wanted to live. One morning, a breeze rolled through the jungle and ran its way right into Grandpa Milito's face. It stirred him awake, and immediately he was smiling before his eyes could even open to see the sun. He hopped onto his feet, stretched his back, and flapped his ears back and forth. He put on his glasses and looked around. The rest of his family were still sleeping in their places. Mami Edita was curled up with Eli Cherie. North was spread out wide in his own patch of grass, and South held her box full of pebbles in her arms like a child. Grandpa Milito quieted a giggle as he started taking in a long, deep breath. Then, he lifted up his trunk, took all the breath he had, and blew it out in a great loud trumpet. The family awoke all at once, and with a start, North jumped up high and was already styling his hair. South got up next and looked around and double-checked the clasp on her raw collections box. Mami Edita and Ellie Cherie woke last. Mami Edita was used to such awakenings, and Ellie Cherie woke up with a smile. Who good? Grandpa Milito said. You're all up. It's time to get ready. The day has already begun. The children all complained and moaned while their grandpa laughed. They still had sleep in their eyes to rub away. No one was as quick to wake up as Grandpa Milito. He was so ready for his day that he was already bouncing around, hopping between them, trying to rush them to get ready. Come on, come on, he cheered on. Let's go, let's go. Grandpa Milito... North groaned, You're too cheerful this early. Everyone should be cheerful this early, Grandpa said. He reached over with his trunk and swept North's hair up tall. 
When South saw her brother's hair, she put her hand up to her mouth to keep her laughter unheard. And what's this? Grandpa asked, turning to her. It's no good to laugh if everyone can't hear it. Come on, little lady, laugh out loud like this. Grandpa Milito bent back and gave a great big belly laugh with his mouth wide open and smiling. South saw him laughing and couldn't hold herself back. Her laugh was loud, but pretty, like a song. When North heard her, he started to laugh too, and his was big and loud, and he stomped his feet as he laughed. Well, it is a good morning, Mami Adita said, and Grandpa Melito turned and bent down with his cane, holding him up to Ellie Cherie. She was hiding her face with her ears and peered at him through the gap where her trunk was. Are you trying to play hide and seek? He asked. You didn't even give me a chance to count. Very tricky, little Ellie. Ellie giggled and parted her ears. She was more than happy to see him again, and she reached forward to give his trunk a hug. What do you have planned to do today? Mommy Adita asked. She knew he had something planned because he always did. There was no need for him to play so coy. When she asked, North and South quieted their laughter and leaned in to listen. Well, firstly, he began, we must take ourselves on a walk. Where are we going to? North asked. Wherever we can, Grandpa Milito answered. There's no sense in staying without much playing. No reason to sit staring without views for comparing. If there's nothing here, we'll travel there. And then we can go anywhere. Just follow after me. Follow along and don't fall behind. Grandpa started skipping off with his cane tapping the ground. Ellie Cherie was the first to chase after, followed by Mami Adita and the North and South running together as they went out of their clearing and deeper into the great forest around them. The family went forward through and out the jungle, into the lands that rolled on flatly and mounded up in dirt and mud. They walked across rich dark dirt, through fresh green grass, and across crackling brown reeds, and across a body of mud and rocks. It was a long walk, but everyone stayed cheerful with Grandpa Milito leading their parade. How much farther? Mami Adita asked. Well, who can say? Grandpa answered. He stopped suddenly. The twins, following behind, bumped into him and then into each other. North bumped into South, South bumped into Mami Adita, and Mami Adita bumped into Ellie Cherie, who was running behind in the back. Ellie fell to the ground, but her landing was soft from the mud, but she worried over the dirt around her. Will it be a place we can wash up? Ellie Cherie asked. Grandpa Melito trumpeted briefly and turned with a smile. That's it then, he exclaimed. He looked around, then started heading for a grassy hill. The rest followed after him to find out what he was looking for. Along the way, he took a big long leaf off a tree and rolled it up into a tube. South dear, Grandpa began, could I have a look at a rug from your collection? Of course, she said. She opened her collection box, which was full of rocks that all sparkled and glimmered in the light. Whatever rock do you need? I need one that's clear, he said, like a crystal. This one? South asked. She held up a beautiful purple gem with many sides and angles to it. Not quite, he answered. He bent his trunk down and picked one out on his own. A round, glassy stone, like a marble, was what he needed. 
He put it in one end of his leaf tube and then looked through the other. What's that? North asked. It lets me see very far away, Grandpa Milito answered, so that I can look to find something that my eyes alone can't see. Uh Aha, he exclaimed, and there it is. There what is? North asked. What do you see? South asked. Is it very far away? Mami Edita asked. Oh, not at all, Grandpa said. He gave South her gem back and tucked the leaf behind his ear. It won't be nearly as far as it looks, and if you don't see it from here, you'll be quite surprised when we find it. I'd like to know what it is, first of all, Mami Edita said, tilting her head to the side. Elishiri was still wiping her bum from her fall, and her ears flapped with frustration. Why, Grandpa began, we're heading for a watering hole, full of crisp and clean, shining and shimmering water. Everyone lit up with joy at his reveal. Ellie Cherie started beaming with a smile once more, and she flapped her ears back and forth in her hands. It's through the woods again, Grandpa said, and down a little hill. Come, come, before the sun can set, we want to go where it is wet. Join along. When we sing, the distances we walk are shorter. The family sang along after him, repeating his jovial rhyme as they headed for the water. Grandpa Melito led them with his skipping hops into the jungle woods. He remembered the way that his looking device pointed him, and an elephant never forgets what it learned. He knew where the watering hole was and how to get there, and the family wanted to get there with him. The woods around them were dark and quiet. It was spooky and made Ellie Cherie feel frightened. She got close to Mami Edita as they walked. Thankfully, the sound of Grandpa Milito's humming filled the air and made her feel a bit better. Oh, it's a beautiful day to walk through the woods, Grandpa Milito said. His happy parade led kept everyone walking along with him, but none of them held the same energy and joy that he did. North was looking around at the woods. He was worried something might come from the darkness. So he kept swinging his arms wide to make himself seem strong in his steps. South was keeping her eyes to the ground with her chest of precious stones in her arms. She was looking out for new rocks she had not seen before. Mami Adita and Ellie Cherie were in the back but kept themselves close together. Ellie was still a little dirty and was excited to get to the watering hole soon. But she did not want to walk all the way through the dark forest to get there. Mama, Ellie Cherie said. Mama, I'm worried. Don't worry, Ellie, Mommy Edita said, patting Ellie's head. Grandpa knows the way. He won't let us get lost. The group was suddenly stopped from the front. Grandpa Melito stood still in the path and looked left and right. What is it? North asked. South leaned out to look ahead to see why Grandpa had stopped. There was a split in the road that led left and right. The left way went deeper into the forest and the right way went up a slope. Which way will we go? South asked. Well, my dear, Grandpa said, according to my impeccable, very good memory, the watering hole would be straight ahead through the trees. I wasn't able to see a path that led there from here. Does that mean we're lost? North asked. He looked around and rubbed his hands together. Then he took a deep, brave breath. Well, that's fine. I'm not afraid. Look, if we just need to go through those trees, I can push them over. North stomped up ahead of Grandpa and walked up to one of the trees. North was big and strong and loved to show off, but when he did it, he sometimes broke things. 
Grandpa knew that if he let North try, he would knock down a tree and one of their paths would definitely be blocked. Grandpa plucked a leaf off a nearby branch with his trunk and sneaked up behind North. North was stretching his arms and getting ready to push against the trunk of a sturdy tree. Just as he put his arms up, Grandpa Melito reached his trunk out and started to tickle North under his arms. North laughed and giggled and couldn't stop shaking. He stumbled back and hopped back into Grandpa Milito's belly, which softened his fall and bounced him forward again. No, no, Grandpa said. There's no reason to take down a perfectly good tree. I have a better idea what you can do with your muscles. North slowed his laughter until he could finally stop. He was a little upset that Grandpa Milito had stopped him and made him laugh so much when he was trying to be tough. South was laughing as well, and it made her brother pout. It's something the both of you can do, Grandpa said, turning to South who stopped laughing. If you go up on that hill and North lifts up South over his head, you may be able to see over the trees and find out which path would take us to the water. Oh no, South said. That sounds far too scary for me. But I won't let you fall. North said, you can trust me to do that. Yes, of course, Grandpa said. North is so very strong. He can lift you and Ellie and possibly even Mommy Edita and maybe even me. So if you wouldn't like to do it, South, I would gladly take your place. Grandpa smiled widely and started looking up to the hill. South looked at North who was shaking his head. South sighed and nodded. She knew even better how strong her brother was, but lifting an elephant grandpa's size would be heavier than his arms could handle. She knew she was just big enough to stay up, even if it might scare her. I'll do it, South said. Okay, grandpa said, but only if you're sure. I can do it, Ellie said. She came running up to the bigger kids and was flapping her ears with excitement. Sister, do you think you can lift me up too? All three of us, together, as high as we can go? You're not so small anymore, South said to Ellie. And if I lift you up, I'll have nowhere to put my rocks down. Leave it to us, North said. He started walking up the hill, and South followed after him. Once they got to the highest part of the path, North bent over and lowered his hands so South could climb onto him. He lifted her up with a great big oof and a trumpeting shout. South was up over North's head, but she was too afraid to open her eyes. She was bending over, holding onto her box full of stones to keep it safe, and her legs wobbled and shook in North's hands. South dear, Grandpa said, can you see from up there? I can't, she called. It's too scary. I don't want to look. You shouldn't be scared, Grandpa said. We need you to look out from where you are. No, please, South said. I'm too high up. I want to go down. I'll do it. I'll do it. Ellie Cherie said, hopping in place. I'm afraid you're not tall enough, little Ellie, Grandpa said. But South is tall enough if she opened her eyes. What should we do? Mommy Edita asked. Grandpa put his hand to his chin and thought. He pushed out his lip and curled his trunk to his head to give it a scratch. He wiggled one ear and then waggled the other. And then finally, he got an idea. He walked up to the two that were still on the hill and pushed himself up with his cane to the ground to help him along until he was next to them. South was a full head higher than him and could see just over the tree lines if she would open her eyes. But she was shivering with fright and her eyes were closed tight. What's wrong, South dear? Grandpa asked. Grandpa Melito, she said, I can't open my eyes. 
I'm up too high. If I take a look, I'm afraid that I'll fall down. There's nothing at all to fear, Grandpa began. In front of you is the big, wide world with all of its splendor to be seen. And you get to see it from somewhere no one else can. We're all too short to go up there, and birds fly too high to go where you are. If you open your eyes, you'll get to see something that no one else can see. And, North added, if you open your eyes to help, you can get down sooner. I know, but I can't, South said, shaking her head. I'm sorry. Would you like to know a secret? Grandpa asked. A secret to help you open your eyes even when you're afraid to. Yes, South said. I'd like to learn that. First, what you do, Grandpa explained, is imagine something that you truly, dearly love to look at. Something that makes you smile bright like a star, and your eyes sparkle like gemstones when you take a single look at it. Form the image in your mind so strong and clear that you can believe that it's real. Then, when you open your eyes, look around for it. You won't see anything you're afraid of if you look out for what you love. South tried her hardest to imagine something she wanted to see that was far away from fear. She imagined her family, who she loved, but knew it would be much more scary to see them up high where she was. Instead, she started to think of something else. She thought of her pretty rocks all safe in their box. She loved seeing stones with shiny surfaces. No matter how many she collected, they were all different from each other, and she could find them anywhere she went. Wherever her family traveled, she could pick up a precious pebble to carry with her, and that pebble would remind her of the places she'd gone. When she opened her eyes, she looked for a stone, a precious gem, made of sparkling blue and crystal clearness, just like the shining surface of water. Over the trees some distance away, through the forest with a path that led down over rolling hills, was a lake that sparkled bright in the sun. I see it, South pointed. She was so excited that she'd found it, she had forgotten her fear and so happy that she also forgot that North was holding her up. Grandpa Milito looked to where she pointed and reached up to lift her off of North's shaking hands. Very good, my dear, Grandpa said, praising her. She looked down with a bit of shyness and held up her box of stones. I pictured a stone, she said, and the water looks just like a sparkling blue one. Indeed, Grandpa said, and that's why I wanted to get there so fast, so you could see it up close, and you know there are all kinds of precious stones that gather around the beach of such water. All that sparkling blue will wash into the stones and turn them into beautiful gems. South gasped at Grandpa's words. They filled her with excitement. She couldn't wait to be there even more than before. It's over this road, South pointed out. I saw the road on the hills leading to it from this way. Then it's a good thing we're up here already, Grandpa Milito said. He saw Elishri and Mami Adita already up the hill. North swung his arms at his side and huffed and puffed to catch his breath. Grandpa gave him a pat on the shoulder. You didn't let your sister fall. Of course I wouldn't, North said proudly. I never let a thing hurt my family. I'm strong so I can protect everyone. There you are, my dear boy, Grandpa said. What do you say? For a while, you take the lead while we follow after. Can I? North asked. I mean, yes, of course I can, and I will. Follow me, everyone. South found the way, and I'll lead us there. You heard the man, Grandpa said. 
he started stepping up high and stomping down hard in a march, practicing before they started to move. He followed after North, who was much smaller than him, and stayed behind like he promised. But he was still walking very lively like he was leading them along like a parade. Ellie and South skipped together while Mami Edita followed behind, keeping a watch on everyone. They continued to walk over the hills and into the forest on their way to the watering hole. The elephant family continued their hike over big rolling hills that led through the forest. They were on the sure path that led to the watering hole, and just a little longer until they arrived. It would be just in time, too, because everyone was starting to get thirsty and a little tired. The shade from the forest kept them cool, but when they walked through the sun, they felt hot and dried out. North was breathing hard, but kept himself tough and at the front of the line. Grandpa Melito didn't seem bothered at all and smiled as he hopped his way along with his cane, helping him to walk. South was very cool and kept her box of stones close by the whole time. Mami Edita and Ellie Cherie stayed close behind everyone, but there was a little distance that they couldn't catch up. The older kids were just a bit faster than Ellie could walk, and Mami Edita didn't want to be left by herself. The path led them all down the slope of a hill and into a valley where the trees cleared out. It looked like a place that would be nice for a picnic, and Grandpa Milito made sure to remember it for their trip back. The slope was very steep, though. North had to slow himself down, and it slowed everyone down behind him. Grandpa Milito didn't want to go slower, so he picked up speed as he went and was skipping ahead of North down the hill. You're not stronger than gravity, my dear boy. Grandpa said as he passed, you just have to go with the flow and take a chance to make a dance. When he said that, he twirled without missing a step. One hop at a time, Grandpa went down to the bottom of the hill and waited below while his family followed after. North decided to run instead of staying slow and caught up to Grandpa Milito in no time. South ran as well, but with faster steps to keep her balance. As she did, she heard the rocks jingling and tapping inside her wooden box. Mami Edita didn't try to make herself rush, but she saw Ellie Cherie going forward, giggling as she ran to the bottom of the hill. She wanted to catch up to her brother and sister and Grandpa as fast as she could. She was most excited to get to the watering hole, a new place to enjoy with her family. But just as she came to the bottom of the hill, Ellie Cherie tripped and made a sudden jump. Everyone looked on as she went through the air and heard her when she made a big thud onto the ground. Ellie Cherie pushed herself up off the ground, but she was holding back tears. She hurt herself when she tripped but not on her face or her trunk or her body. She hurt her foot. She could feel the pain growing from down low up high, and it nearly caused her to cry. Oh, no, South said. Ellie, Mami Edita called out. Grandpa Milito stomped his foot on the ground and threw out his arms. Hold it, everyone, he shouted. Nobody move. He tipped his trunk up in the air and started sniffing around. I smell something in this clearing. What do you mean? North asked. Why, I smell something nasty, Grandpa said as he started to walk back and forth, sniffing the whole time. Something achy, painy, and very unhappy. Yes, I'd know this scent anywhere. It's a nasty boo-boo that snuck up on us. A boo-boo? South asked. While Grandpa was acting out, Ellie got up and was sitting down. She held her ears over her face and hid her tears from being seen. Her brother and sister got down without a problem, and she didn't want to stop her family from moving with her pain. North, Grandpa said. 
did the boo-boo get to you? Do you feel achy, painy, or not at all good? No, North said. I'm really tough and strong. No boo-boo could get to me. And you, South Deer, Grandpa asked, turning his trunk and then the rest of his body to her. Were all of your stones safe from the boo-boo? South opened her wooden box and examined her rocks. She checked them from one end of the box to the other for any cracks or chips or dents at all but they were all just as smooth and glittery as she remembered them. No, South answered. I'm fine, thank you. Grandpa marched over and bent down to Ellie Cherie. What about you? he asked. Ellie shook her head, no, without letting her teary eyes be seen. Her ears were flopped over her face, and Grandpa Milito couldn't see either her wet eyes or pouting lips. Mami Adita could see from behind that her little girl was still hurting, so she thought of a plan to help her. Oh, Grandpa, Mami Adita said, I think the boo-boo got to me. Oh, my, no, Grandpa Melito said. Where did it get you? How are you hurt? It's here, Mami Adita said, holding out her arm. Here on my hand, and can you see it? Grandpa took her hand and held it gently in his. He brought his face close and set his glasses correctly to see as close as he could at Mami Adita's hand. I suppose I can't see it, Grandpa said, but the boo-boo can come and go without being seen. It can leave an achy, painy, very bad feeling inside you, and you might not even be able to tell. Well... How can we fix it? Mami Adita said. The two twins came over and crowded to try and look at her hand, but Grandpa lifted it up out of sight. The two adults shared a little wink with each other as their plan was becoming complete. Even Ellie Cherie moved one of her ears aside to look up. It's a good thing, Grandpa said, that I am an expert on boo-boos and how to handle them. He took Mami Adita's hand and gave it a little kiss. Then he let her hand go, and she looked it over on her own. Oh, that did it, she said. The pain is gone. The boo-boo is gone from my hand. The twins were less than impressed. North just shrugged, and South turned away back to her box of stones. She started searching around for more stones on the ground that looked pretty. That only left Ellie Cherie, who slowly drew her ears away. That's all it takes, Grandpa said. There's no shame in being hurt by a boo-boo, when such a thing is just one kiss away from a fix. Grandpa Malito, Ellie said, I think I got hurt by a boo-boo, too. Grandpa turned to Ellie with a gentle smile and lowered himself with a grunt to his knee. Can you tell me where it hurt you? He asked. Ellie pointed to her foot, which was still giving her pain. Oh, that nasty boo-boo won't get away with this. You need that for walking and running and dancing and playing. What a naughty thing it's done. He picked her foot up very carefully and gave it a little kiss on the top of her toe. Ellie Sharif felt the pain start to go away and she was amazed. Mami Adita helped her up to her feet, and she carefully took a step forward. The pain was gone from her foot to her face, and she used the flap of her ears to wipe the rest of her tears away. Grandpa Milito pushed himself up, and Mami Adita helped him to his feet while Ellie ran off to follow north and south around in the clearing. The family took a little break to calm down before making the rest of the walk through the woods. They were only a little ways away now, and the watering hole would be in sight soon. The elephant parade would keep marching on until they found where they were going. The elephant family walked on through the woods, up and down hills much more carefully, but still very carefree on their way to the watering hole up ahead. 
they were getting close enough that they could feel the cooling breeze off the water blowing through the trees. Ah, they sighed when they felt it. Their long walk through the hot jungle would be very worth it once they got to the shore. North and South were tired, but very pleased with themselves and kept their heads high as they walked. Ellie Cherie was in the best of spirits and could run and jump all around Grandpa Melito, who led them forward. Mami Adita, though, felt that she had done enough walking. She wasn't full of energy like Grandpa Melito was or young like her children. She was an adult who knew when she had to take a break, and it was soon. She stayed many steps behind the leader of the group and was not catching up. Grandpa stopped at the foot of the hill. It was the biggest one they had to climb yet. It went up and up, out of the forest and rose up along the side of a mountain. Up at the top, the trail split again, with one road going even higher up along a big, nasty-looking mountain path, and the other trail went down the hill towards the water. Hmm, Grandpa hummed with thought. We'll have to climb up this hill and see which way to go. It's very tall, South said. Yes, it is, Grandpa agreed, but we can't climb it by looking at it. There's only one way to get up this hill. We must do it together. How can we climb it together? Ellie Cherie asked. It will be very simple, Grandpa said. I have the most experience with climbing, and with my trusty cane, I have the best balance. So I shall go first, and North is the strongest, so he'll hold on to my tail as I go. Then South will hold on to his, and then Ellie... You shall hold on to hers, and from ahead and behind, we shall help each other to make it one step at a time up the dangerous hill. What about Mommy Adita? Ellie asked. Mommy Adita had just caught up to the group since they stopped. Grandpa could tell that she was very tired and had slowed down from when they all started. He understood how she could feel, but did not want to worry her children by pointing it out. Well, of course, she has to lead us, Grandpa said. She's the smartest of us all. Oh, me? Mami Adita said. You want me to go up that big steep hill first? Of course, Grandpa said, and we'll all be right behind you. The children all nodded. They were all ready and waiting to start, while Mami Adita was ready and waiting for a rest. She knew a rest by the water would feel so much better if she could just make it there. While the elephant family waited to begin, another family crossed their way. A small pack of wolves came out of the forest and crossed the road to head into the trees. Good day to you all, Grandpa greeted kindly. He was nice to every creature he met, and because he was so joyful and happy, those creatures would all return the same kindness. The father wolf at the head of the pack turned and nodded his head back. Good day, the wolf said. Are you elephants going to climb up that hill? Yes, we are, Grandpa Melito said. There's a watering hole along this path that we want to get to. We're on our way there now, the wolf said. We're moving through the trees because we can fit between them. You have quite some hard work ahead of you up that hill. Best of luck. Why, thank you, Grandpa said, using his trunk to make a polite gesture. The wolves went ahead and left the elephants alone. Mami Adita wished that she could follow after them through the woods where it seemed easier, but she knew she couldn't. The trees were too close together, and her family would be left behind. All right, Mami Adita said with a sigh. Let me go ahead and walk the path first. We'll be right behind you, Grandpa Milito said. Sure enough, once Mami Adita started climbing up the hill, one long step at a time, the rest of the family came after in their train. Grandpa stomped up after her, 
followed by North tugging along with his strong legs, and then South who had a tight grip on her brother's tail and a tighter hold on her treasure box, then little Ellie Cherie at the rear. Not much farther, Grandpa said. He gave them encouragement to go on for the kids behind him and the mother up ahead. Mami Adita was slowing even further and was starting to get close to Grandpa. Grandpa lowered his head into her back and pushed her up from behind. She was a little surprised, but it kept her moving. Don't you worry, dear, Grandpa said. I'm not pulling everyone from behind. They're all helping to push me ahead. So I'll push you too. Together, we can do this. Yes, Mommy agreed. She felt her family behind her. Then Grandpa pushed her. It was like everyone coming together to give her a hand. The whole family worked together to go up the path. And in no time, they were at the top. Mami Adita was so happy that she sat on the ground and waited for everyone to come up around her. We made it, Mama, Ellie Cherie said. The little elephant went and hugged her mother. The twins came around behind and hugged her too. The good thing about elephant families is that even with three children, a mother has two arms and a trunk that she can hug with too. So everyone got a hug back. Grandpa also took a little rest and leaned on his cane. From up on the hill, they could all see the watering hole. The way down was much less steep and went straight to the edge of the water. There were already animals gathered around it on all sides enjoying the water. Look at that, he said, pointing to the water. We're so very close now, and it took all of us to get here. You're right. Mami Adita said, what a journey it's been. Well, it won't end quite so soon, Grandpa Milito said. I'd very much like to see what goes up the other path, for instance. Let's go to the water first, Ellie Cherie said. Grandpa bowed to her. As you wish, he said. The elephant family stood up once more and carefully went down the hill to their goal. They walked in formation again with Grandpa Milito in front, Mami Adita behind, North, South, and Ellie Cherie skipping merrily behind them all. They finally arrived at the watering hole. The cool blue water sparkled across the wide surface. Animals from across the jungle were drinking from it and giving each other space. It was a quiet, peaceful place where everyone could rest. Grandpa went up to the water first to inspect it. He felt the coolness of the air and decided it was cold enough to drink. He looked at it carefully with his glasses and decided it was clear enough to drink. He lifted his ear up and held it up to listen to the water and decided it sounded good enough to drink. He sniffed just over the surface of the water and decided it smelled good enough to drink. Can we drink yet? North asked. Can we wash yet? Ellie asked. Don't rush, don't rush, Grandpa said. I have to make sure the water's perfect. If it's not perfect, we'll have to find another one somewhere else. The kids groaned. They came so far over many hills and through hot jungle and didn't want to go again. Mami Adita crouched down next to the water and took a sip through her trunk. She drank it down and sighed with relief. This water is perfect, she said. Grandpa, you should try drinking the water to see if it's good, not listening to it. Oh, of course, Grandpa said. I nearly forgot about the taste test. The kids came rushing up to the water's edge and started to drink. North took big handfuls of water, even though he didn't need his strength to lift it up. South took a sip of herself and then squirted some water from her trunk onto her stones to wash them. Ellie Cherie splashed water all over her face and body to clean herself off and then shook it all off with big flaps of her ears. The elephant family enjoyed their time by the water, politely sharing their space with other animals so that everyone had enough water to be happy. There were many animal families that had all traveled together to get there, just like they did. 
from the fathers and mothers to the little children, they all had a role that helped the whole group come together. Mami Adita was very proud of all her family for working together to help each other out. North was strong for his sister South. Grandpa was there for Ellie Cherie, and all of them helped her when she needed, and she didn't have to say anything. Grandpa Milito was the happiest of them all. Another adventure was done, and everyone helped to make it happen. Together is better to get through the weather, and whether by heathery, gray or not. We're family bound in the loudest round, cause we're elephants who love to make sound quite a lot. After his rhyme, Grandpa trumpeted out and his great big shout went across the whole spring. The animals gathered made sounds of their own to celebrate with him. The whole place was of cheer and the rainforest where the trees grew tall was alive with the sounds of laughter.